going to open the meeting. Uh, this is the uh, Sherburn Advisory Committee meeting, August 30th, 2023. Uh, let me just read through the agenda. We'll vote to approve the agenda unless anybody has any changes to propose. Um, and then we'll do intros and, and so on. So um, as noted on the agenda, uh, might take items out of order. I don't think that's going to be an issue tonight. Um, and of course, if there's anything that didn't get on the agenda that I couldn't have known about two days ago, we can add that and make adjustments as needed. Again, I don't think that's going to be an issue tonight. Um, we'll do some welcomes and intros again, since we have some new members. We typically then start with liaison reports, which is just a chance for members of advisory to uh, share anything that they've heard from uh, any news they've heard relevant for advisory, maybe from whatever department they're liaison for. There's some budget news to share with the broader committee or some bit of information that somebody had having gone to uh, another meeting that, that would be helpful to share with the uh, full committee. The uh, current items, meeting items for tonight are, this is our first meeting of the new advisory season, which officially begins August 1. Um, as I mentioned before to some of you, um, so Natalie couldn't be here, so she would have been seven. Still two um, openings. I think Mary is very close to getting people set up for those, but that's not done yet um, and people aren't sworn in. So right now, seven people on the committee, six here tonight, it's a quorum, we can, we can, we can take care of business. So a reorganization is electing a chair and a vice chair. Um, and typically um, also liaison assignments, um, more on that. that, that's not gonna happen tonight, but more on that when we get there. Um, and then the rest of the plan for tonight was just to do a preview of the calendar for a year um, specifically with some focus on the special town meeting, because that's going to that's going to come at us really, really uh, quickly. And then finally, uh, we can see about approving the minutes from the last meeting. Um, at least that's on the agenda. We'll see if we can if we can do that. So that is everything I had for the agenda. Does anybody have any changes to suggest for our agenda for tonight? Don't think this will be a super long meeting. Um, at what point do we make the um, nominations or for advisory yeah. or whatnot? So, so, so here, 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 here's what I was thinking. Um, in a second, since it sounds like there are no changes, we'll do a roll call vote to approve the agenda as written. Because we're doing a meeting on Zoom, which state law uh permits us to do we actually have to do a roll call vote so we'll do a roll call vote um to approve the agenda um i was thinking we could do some just kind of intros around and then after that get to reorganization and electing uh folks Does that nor does that sound okay yes Thank okay you. great okay so since there didn't seem to be many changes um i would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as read I make a motion to approve the agenda. As thanks, read. Nora. Um, second. Good. And second. thanks. Okay, and let's just do a quick roll call. Um, Nora? Aye. Nora? Uh, Wasim? Aye. Mike? Aye. Uh, Penn? Aye. Uh, Paul? Aye. And I'm aye as well. So 6-0, agenda's approved. Uh, I'm guessing there may not be much, but just liaison reports, anything that anybody's got the news that should be shared with the committee. Nora, please go ahead. Yes, um, capital budget we met in the summer, in um, June, July, and we there's only three people on capital budget. Um, I'm now, I was the backup last year. So Peter Galatano was the first, so now I think I'm appointed to that still for this year. You are. You sure. are. Okay. <laughs> um, so it was voted uh, two to one, of which I was the one, to not um, put it forward to town hall or to the town meeting to expand it because it was talk about um, putting it on for expansion. I think Jeremy might be able to talk a little bit about that, but there is a meeting that the um, three of 
the capital budget is scheduled for, I believe, September 12th. And then Jeremy, I believe you'll be there at that meeting uh, talking about the expansion from three to five people for capital budget. So that's my liaison report for that. Great, thanks. Jeremy, did you want to add anything to that? I'm just a little context. It was a with the special town meeting being called, it was um, sort of a an idea that came up to expand that committee because there had been some issues with quorum in the past. So it, it's tough to do business with the three person committee. So there was an idea to expand it to five. It came up rather quickly, so it really didn't stick as an agenda item for this fall fall town meeting. However, it's something that um, the capital budget committee and others would like to talk about in the lead up to the spring town meeting. So. I uh, have a meeting with Peter Moores on Friday, and as, as Nora said, uh, the full Capital Budget Committee's meeting um, September 12th. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else with anything to share on liaison reports? Okay. So I thought, members of advisory, that, that since we have some new members, probably our next meeting will do this again. Might be nice for everybody to just take 30 seconds to just for each of us to introduce ourselves. Um, if we were doing this in person, it would be a little easier for everybody to get to know each other. Uh, we can talk about, uh, after I think we have all nine members, we can talk about if we want to do mostly Zoom meetings, if we want to do any in-person meetings. We, it's, it's, it's our choice to decide how to do that. But for now, while we're on Zoom. So I think I've had a chance Penn and Paul, I've had a chance to talk with both of you, but just to do the 30 second version reminder. Uh, so moved to uh, Sherburn in 2012, moved up from the Washington DC area where I was involved in federal government economic policy stuff, uh, teach at Wellesley College. Um, and a few years ago, got onto advisory and then after a rookie year because of circumstances and how things were shifting landed as chair last year which um those of you who Mike was seeing Nora was kind of wild thing to jump in and do that but you know we we got we got through the year okay I think um and uh yeah that's that's just a really quick and, and I live on 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 uh, Lake Street that's just a really quick um summary Nora do you want to uh just do the quick intro for sure. everyone. I've been here since 2000. I originally lived on Morse Road and then I live on Woodland Street. I've been a broker owner in residential sales um, for, I can't believe I'm saying this, 25 years. And uh, I actually own 5 Washington Street, that little yellow house at Sherburn Gallery and Gifts too, um, and Landmark Residential. And I've recently uh, merge with uh, Advisors Living. And I have two kids that have gone through most of the school, uh, Dover Sherburn schools, and they are living in Los Angeles right now. I can't believe I'm saying that. So they're both in Southern California. Um, and that's about it. And I'm married to my husband, Jim, of almost 29 years. That's it. All right. Um, Wasim. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, Paul, Penn. And everyone else, of course, <laughs> good to see you again. Uh, I, I've been here since I think 2015. I have three daughters, um, two of whom are twins in fifth grade. So next year, middle school, big things coming. Uh, I've been on advisory. For, this is going to be my fifth year. It's been um, get the chance to, to be with great people, uh, hear great opinions and, 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 uh, uh, yeah, just looking forward to doing one more year. I think this is going to be my last year, uh, you know, so for personal reasons, but, uh, yeah, happy to be here. Happy to see everyone. Mike. Uh, me and my wife moved here in 2012, and we live on Maple Street. And uh, about six years ago, we had our son, Thomas, and he will be starting kindergarten tomorrow. So uh, like Wasim said, big things, big changes coming. And um, it's my second year on advisory. And um, yeah, good to, good to meet you, Penn and Paul. And like Wasim said, good to see everyone else. And you want to just say a few words? Uh, sure. So um, I moved to Sherburn in uh, 1990 and lived 
most of the time on Russet Hill Road. Five years ago, I moved to Nason Hill Road. Um, uh, I'm married, my wife and I have been married for a long, long time. Uh, my wife, Emily, is an artist. Uh, I'm essentially retired from a career in the arts. Um, and I'm excited but trepidatious to be an advisor. So thank you for asking. <laughs> It'll all be good, I promise. I absolutely promise. It'll all be good. Um, Paul. Sure, it's nice to meet you all. Um, so my name is Paul Pilot. My uh, family I moved to Sherborne. It'll be three years in December. I have twin daughters as well, Wasim. They're, uh, they're starting eighth grade today, actually. Otherwise, their first day. So it's all excited about that. Right. Um, and the other guys have said, like, how long they've been married. So um, okay, we just had our anniversary a few weeks ago. I think we've been married 16 years, but I'll have to double check that to be sure. Um, and I work in product marketing at MathWorks down in Natick. So I've always been kind of close by. Very nice to meet you all. And I'm happy to sort of give back. Like the town's been very good to us. So I figured this is a good way for to volunteer and give back a bit. So. Well, thanks. So, I'm, kind of, thanks. I'm Paul and Penn. I'm delighted that you both agreed to join um, and look forward to, you know, your thoughts, insights as the year goes on. And as Nora was suggesting before, you will learn a ton about how things work in town. I should have mentioned in my intro, and I think I've got maybe everybody but Penn beat on this. Um, so my husband and I moved here in 2012, but we just celebrated our 35th anniversary. Haven't been married for quite all of those years because we couldn't do that, but 35th anniversary going back. So Penn, you might have me beat, but I think I may be ahead of everybody else here on, on that. Um, okay, um, so let's get on to reorganization. So. We're gonna elect um, chair and vice chair. So let me throw open nominations for chair. If I may uh, make a nomination to have Dan Sickle be our chair again this year, I make a nomination for that. Thanks, Nora. Um, if that's what the group wants, I'm happy to do that. Um, is there a second on that? Second. Okay. Um, so let's do a, a roll call vote. Um, just keeping notes here. Um, Nora. Aye. Mike. Aye. Wasim. Aye. Uh, and let's see. Um, Paul. Aye. Ben. Aye. And I guess I can vote aye as well. Okay. Um, thank you all. I appreciate the, um, vote of appreciate the vote of confidence and um, look forward to what I think is going to be a busy year, but a really interesting one. Okay, so uh, since I'm continuous chair, I get to continue running the meeting. Otherwise, I'd be passing this passing the baton on to uh, on to someone else. So opening uh, nominations for vice chair and I'll jump right in and nominate Mike Winters as vice chair. Second. There, a second, great. Um, so let's do roll call again. Um, Nora. Aye. Wasim. Aye. Uh, Penn. Aye. Paul. Aye. Um, and Mike. Should I vote nay? <laughs> yeah. no, that, dep that depends on how you're thinking about the year ahead. Oh, I vote a. I, I vote I. And I do as well. Um, so that gets us set 6-0 on uh, both of those. Um, ideally, we would have had uh, all nine members here, but um, given all the things coming up in September, it seemed important to do that bit of work and get that get that squared away. Okay, so that's great. And again, uh, for me, thank you for the um, thank you for the vote of confidence um, in uh, in 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 uh, choosing me as chair for another year. Okay, so I wanted to uh, really the next thing to do is to just talk about the schedule for the year, and really just to do that as a setup. Um, 
kind of to a preview of what's coming. We don't, I, I didn't really schedule any work for us tonight or any substantive discussions for us to have. We actually shouldn't get into substantive discussions because that wasn't on the agenda. So, you know, it'd be out of bounds for us to get to that. But I think particularly um, Penn and Paul for you, kind of a preview of kind of what's the rhythm of the year and, and when are things going to come up and what are the busier times going to be? Um, and and for, for everybody else too, I think will be helpful. Um, I'm going to do a screen share in just a second here with this document that I had sent around before um, that laid out a uh, schedule for the year. And let's see if I can get this to play. Okay, so that should be, hopefully that is um, visible. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Great. Okay, good. And I'm just getting screens adjusted so I can see everybody. Okay. So I'm going to kind of skip over the special town meeting bits at the beginning and sort of talk more about what would the typical rhythm for a year be. And then let's come back to the special town meeting um, and have a bit more of an intensive discussion about that since that is coming up quickly. Um, and I would again say, any questions? Wait, how does this work? When do we do this? What's this about? Please jump in and ask because you know it's it's a great time to um, do as 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 much of that as we can to try to all get on the same page about what's coming and what what the work of the committee is going to be. So, the typical work for advisory in the fall is what lands in the October 4th and October 11th meetings, which is doing guidance and the COLA, and currently have scheduled two meetings to do that. And what that amounts to, the guidance is guidance that as a committee, we give to Jeremy and the budget makers. Uh, here is kind of a target rate of change um, in the budget. Now, Obviously, some departments will have unique circumstances, uh, particular expenses that blew out for one reason. But the idea is, here's the benchmark, here's the thing to shoot for. And if you're not hitting that, come prepared to explain why that is. Uh, for the last several years, that guidance um, has been flat with, in nominal terms, no change in budgets. Um, Given inflation pressures in the last year, that obviously didn't hold in every department, but the idea was try to impose some budget discipline. That's the target. Uh, you know, there may be efficiencies that can be gained that would allow some new uh, initiatives to get going because maybe some other things that we don't need to be doing or we can be doing more or the town can be doing more efficiently. And there were plenty of departments where unique things happened and Department heads came, made a, made the argument for why they needed something beyond um, flat budget guidance, um, and then there was a conversation about that. So, you know, we may choose this year to do that again with flat budget guidance. We may choose to do something different, but in those two meetings, that guidance part is coming to an agreement as a committee on what guidance we want to give to Jeremy and to budget makers. The COLA piece. Um, it, it's maybe a, a misnomer, COLA standing for cost of living adjustment. Maybe a better term would just be wage increase and so or salary increase. So what that's about is for town employees who are not unionized. Um, so, you know, police, uh, DPW, the schools are all unionized. So they're salary increases are as per collective bargaining agreements. But for the, I should have looked up the number, 40 or so town employees, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wildly off, but I think it's about 40 or so town employees who are not in a union, uh, their salary increase um, comes, well, well, advisory makes a recommendation to town meeting of what that salary increase should be. And then assuming, you know, if town meeting accepts that, then that's that's the salary increase that gets set. And I think it, 
in recent memory, the number that advisory recommends is what happens. Um, it could be different because town meeting could uh, do something different than what advisory recommends, but that's what the COLA or cost of living adjustment or wage increase um, bit is about. Personnel board also gets involved in that. So the personnel board will make a recommendation, but it's advisory's recommendation that goes to town meeting as part of the part of the proposed operating budget for the for the town. So had those two meetings, the 4th and 11th of October, and then November 1 meeting, hoping that we can finalize guidance and our cost of living adjustment recommendation, uh, because really we want to get our that guidance letter out. This that material all gets summarized in the letter that advisory drafts and sends to Jeremy and to department heads uh, that says, hey, here's here's key background inputs for putting your budget together, both the overall budget number guidance and what advisory recommends a COLA to be. And we really want need want that letter to go out in early November because budget makers have to submit budgets uh, by the end of December um, so that Jeremy and uh, Deb can quickly get that all pulled together so that when we get to January, we can start doing budget review. So that's the typical main work for advisory in the fall. And then hoping that if all that goes according to plan, uh, later in November, December, as it gets to holiday time, we won't need to be meeting. Uh, if we don't, if, if we can't come to an agreement in the meeting scheduled on guides and cola, we, we might need to schedule another meeting, but I'm hopeful that this will be enough time for us to talk through all the issues and come to come to a hopefully a consensus or at least a majority um, on those on those two pieces. Let me stop there to pick up any questions before talking about the January budget review bit. And I was just going to say, Nora, Mike, Wasim, those of you who've done this before, or Jeremy, please jump in if there's anything that should be um, added added on to that. Nora, do you want to start? Yes. Um, are, is, for example, a special town meeting on the 17th, will that be in person or via Zoom? Uh, the special town meeting will be in person at Lindquist Commons at, at you know, the high school, okay. in you know, the auditorium at the high school and middle school. Um, our public hearing on the 27th, and I'll come back, I'll come back to all of this at the end that that's scheduled as a zoom meeting okay I, and actually i meant yeah okay thank you jeremy you popped up did you what did you want to add to that um, I, I think it, it, i think you've explained it well dan um nothing to add here just okay okay you just questions. you you, you, you popped back up so wanted to give you the <laughs> chance to wanted to give you the yeah. chance to jump in great yes. happy um, to help you with any questions or any you know, anything, any questions of town administration or, um, and I know Deb's here as well. So we could speak to Yeah, and, and just Paul and um, Penn, I'm guessing that you've got all this, but just to quickly say, who are, who are the other folks on the call? So Jeremy, of course, is town administrator. Um, Deb Seifring is the town finance director and Heidi Doyle is the town treasurer. So if you're wondering who are the other folks on and why are they here? Uh, because they provide support for the advisory committee. A lot of what we do depends very much and in interfaces, interacts very much with all of them. So um, very happy and fortunate that they uh, you know, join, join our meetings. It makes everything work uh, much smoother. So um, I, should have, uh, I should have given each of you a chance too, if you wanted to just kind of say hi um, to do that. Um, Again, since I don't know that Penn and Paul have had a chance to meet everybody, um, so so why don't why don't we do that? Just thirty seconds, just say hello. Um, Jeremy, do you just want to? You already said something before, but maybe just jump in for a second. Sure, um, Jeremy Marcet. I'm the town administrator. Uh, been in this role for going on nine months. It'll be a, a full year in November. So I've saw sort of the three quarters of the budget cycle last year. So looking forward to seeing the whole budget cycle this year and. Um, I have had some great conversations with Dan um, through all that time. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to working with with Dan again and the rest of the advisory committee. Um, I think we've got a great team 
here finance team and an administrative uh, town administration team. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's nice that now that Deb will be our, she's not an interim or acting finance director anymore. She's our permanent finance director. So uh, we've, we've been having uh, regular meetings as well to be able to put some things together for you folks that um, and it kind of assist you maybe in a different way than you've seen in the past. So uh, really looking forward to that and working with the group. Uh, my experience, uh, I have a master's of business administration. I'm an engineer as well. Uh, I was a public works director for some time, a consultant for some time. Um, I've been a volunteer in the town I live. I live in Medfield next door, um, going on 20 years. Um, just had our 19th anniversary, my wife and I. Uh, we have a, a freshman and a senior in high school. Uh, so we're in the midst of college searches and 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 that. So um and it's been a busy week this week with them heading back to school. So a little all bit right. about, about me and nice to see you all. Thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. Deb, do you want to just say hello? Uh sure. Um uh, my name is Deb Seafrain. I have been actually working for the town for 15 years. I started out um, as an accounts payable clerk working about 20 hours a week. And then as roles changed, I moved up to 25 hours a week and then 30 hours a week. And then um, about uh, two and a half years ago, the finance director left and I uh, was appointed as interim finance director um, up until about, I think it was April of this year. Then it was, uh, I became the, the permanent finance director working full time. So, um, it's nice to have Jeremy on board and have some direction. We have talked about, you know, the upcoming budget season. And so I think it'll be a, a good season to, um, I think it'll be much smoother than it has been in the past. Um, my background is I have a degree um, in accounting from Miami University in Ohio. We're originally from Ohio. We moved here to Massachusetts uh, 22 years ago, and I live in Hopedale. And um, my experience prior to working for the town was uh, for a ball corporation and Borden. So I really was in the uh, private industry before working for the town. So, but I'm mean, looking forward to a good budget season. Thanks, Dad. Um, Heidi, do you wanna just say hello? Sure, very quickly. Uh, Heidi Doyle, I'm the town treasurer. I have been in this role for coming up to six years. I primarily get involved if there's some debt questions um, involved on spending especially capital items or when to borrow and where things are going um, and just for support so very happy to see everyone volunteering thank you very much all right thanks thanks for that um then probably at our next meeting if we have our two new members we'll probably do all of this do all this one more time um okay so continuing on with um the the kind of budget cycle and the work through the year so then in january Right, budgets get submitted end of December. I think Jeremy and Deb are going to pull those together so that in early January, uh, they will present the proposed budget to advisory, scheduling the main part of that over three meetings. So I think we will divide it up into kind of the first one, kind of an overview. Here's the big picture, along with maybe a couple of departments, and then we will schedule all of the rest of the departments at one of these particular meetings with the idea that the department heads can be there so that in addition to Jeremy kind of walking us through the numbers and the story of the budget, um, the department heads are there to answer questions and, and provide any additional color and context that would be helpful for us. Those are really the meetings that are the heart of advisory's work when it's really incumbent on us to, in a constructive way, dig in, ask questions, think through the logic. Again, you know, our role is really as taxpayers advocate or the, um, you know, kind of advisors to town meeting. I think, of course, you know, I put this in a Washington context in my time there, you know, town meeting is the legislative body for the town. So advisory is kind of like the Congressional Budget Office, you know, providing advice, input, uh, recommendations to uh, the Congress. So we're playing a role. It's a little bit different in terms of exactly what CBO can and can't do. But, um, you know, it's really our role to provide recommendations, advice to town meeting on all things budget and every item on the uh, town meeting warrant. 
Um, so that requires that we all dig in enough to understand the budget, how it's put together, if there are proposed new initiatives, um, think those through. Does that make sense? Is that something that the town should do? Is it something the town can afford to do? Um, or, or sometimes the answer might be no. Uh, you know, maybe that department really doesn't need to add that position or that should wait for some time in the uh, in the future. We focus an advisory on the operating budget. Capital Budget Committee uh, focuses and really zeroes in on the capital budget, although we also will hear about the capital budget and advisory also will be um, voting on capital items um, later on in the in the budget cycle. We also have a meeting, don't, uh, when I put this together, the date hadn't been set when the schools, both Pine Hill and the region will present their budget to us and for the region jointly with Dover Warrant, right? Or their, their um, version of the advisory committee, they call it Warrant Committee in Dover. Um, because again, schools roughly 60% of the budget. Um, so a huge deal. Uh, so that's our chance to ask questions, probe, think about any new things they're doing and, um, you know, what are the budget implications of that um, and so on. Uh, we will have a couple of liaisons to the schools who will have uh, gone to many of their of, of the school committee meetings where they're talking about budget. We'll have met with Don Torre, who's uh, who's the business manager for uh, the, the both. Um, Sherburne schools and for the region and also for Dover schools. Um, so, you know, we'll have already done some work before that, but that's the, you know, that's the opportunity as a committee as a, as a whole to kind of dig in on, um, on the school budget. I met recently with um, the chair and vice chair of Dover Warrant, um, and they seemed very interested in trying to cooperate some on some of that work on the, on, on the regional, on the regional schools. And so for those of us who are liaisons, uh, maybe we'll end up meeting with some folks from Dover Warrant, um, you know, at, at an early stage to kind of coordinate on, you know, any issues or concerns that we have with um, school budget. But then we'll hear the full story um, in that February briefing. The next two pieces, the, the two Warrant article pieces is in addition to providing advice to town meeting on the operating budget, Advisory also provides advice on every warrant article presented to town meeting. Uh, most of those have some financial implications. Some of them don't, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we provide a recommendation if, if there's a majority view, a recommendation to town meeting. So the February 28th, March 6th meeting are the ones where we will hear from um, proponents of the warrant articles outside of the budget operating budget related um, items. And then we come to the public hearing. So that's an advisory meeting. Uh, and mark this one on your calendar. That is an all day event on a Saturday, you know, starting roughly at eight in the morning, probably ending around five. Um, well, we'll talk about whether we want to do that on Zoom or in person. It's a, it's a little ways off still. But that is the chance for uh, the public to provide commentary on the operating budget and also on all of the warrant articles. And one thing to note about that meeting is that is when advisory officially takes a vote on each of the items for town meeting, each of the warrant articles and on the operating budget. Um, and so that is a public thing where each of us, you know, will have to kind of say, here's kind of how I'm thinking about this, either the operating budget or here's how I'm thinking about this particular warrant article. And we will vote and have a recorded vote for, you know, who's in favor of recommending approval of this warrant article to the town or alternatively, you know, who's in favor of recommending no action um, and, and so on. So you know, it's a, uh, it, because there's a lot, typically a lot of material on at town meeting, this goes on for a long time and it is a key time for anyone in town uh, who wants to offer some commentary um, on what's gonna be coming up at town meeting. It's a chance for people to do that 
in a public hearing, a public setting before we actually get to the formality of a town meeting. Um, I think for new advisory members, that can be a little daunting because you've got to go on the record. And that's, of course, why we will have spent this time in January and February digging into all of the elements of the operating budget, the warrant articles, so that everybody understands all the issues and has had some time to kind of think through and work out, you know, their, their own their own thoughts and position um, on the uh, on the articles. And then we get to um, then in April. Um, oh, and I didn't put this I didn't put this on here. Uh, in April, we get to a town meeting. Um, I don't I'll have to look up the date. It's a, a date uh, in April for town meeting. But between the public hearing and town meeting, we as advisory put together that report that you've all seen, right, that that gets mailed to the town, every every household in town and everybody sees. So we put that report, the advisory report together so that with all of our recommendations and kind of summary descriptions of the operating budget and warrant article, each warrant article goes to every household in town as prep for uh, for town meeting. Um, and a couple other scatter dates down at the uh, down at the bottom of the document. So that's the typical year for advisory. Uh, things are pretty busy, not so busy typically in the fall, pretty busy January and February through the public hearing. A little bit of a, little, a bit of work to do to get the advisory report written, town meeting, and then things tend to go relatively quiet during the summer. There's a little bit of business to do because there's some end of fiscal year after June 30th work to do, uh, but it gets pretty quiet then over the summer. So that's the typical year. That's more or less how last year um, went. The one big difference being that with uh, Jeremy here and Deb Seifring as finance director, I think we're gonna get more uh, support from the town. And I think that's going to make um, our January, February budget review um, much smoother because some of the in the weed stuff that advisory did previously, I think Deb and Jeremy are going to mostly kind of do and take care of. Um, and so I think it's going to give us the opportunity to focus more on some of the bigger picture questions about the budget and direction that uh, di financial direction that the town is going and so on. Um, so before I circle back to talk about special town meeting in the fall, let me again stop for any questions, comments. Um, again, for those who've been through this before, if there's anything that should be that would be helpful to add in um, or to correct if I messed anything up, um, please please jump in and do that. So then maybe just a question about sure. the co comments you made about the uh, you know, Jeremy and Deb doing potentially some of the into the weed type of stuff. What 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 do you mean by that? Uh, well, so so Jeremy said that he and I've been talking. So think think about like the budget model. So the budget model is a spreadsheet. Multiple uh, multiple tab spreadsheet that takes proposed budgets for each department and adds it all up, um, does a lot of the calculations for what would that imply given what we hear from uh, the assessor's office about, you know, an, an guesstimate of what might be happening to property valuations, does calculations, uh, guesstimates, let's call it, of, of what would it all imply for the tax rate? Um, you know, if the COLA were higher or lower, how much would that affect the tax rate? So there's this 15 tab, I'm guessing, spreadsheet that does all of that analysis. So last year, Deb and I kind of did that between the two of us, sort of passing the spreadsheet back and forth. And I think this year, Jeremy and Deb are just going to take care of that. They're going to manage that spreadsheet. And it's going to be available to all of us so that we'll be able to benefit from the analysis. But... Uh, and and maybe what seem this is more maybe I made this a little too personal. It's going to make my life a lot okay. better um, because I think two very competent people are going to be managing that spreadsheet, 
rather than my needing to kind of be bouncing back and forth. And Deb and I, wait, who's got the latest version of the spreadsheet? And did you get this change in there? And so that's that's the sort of thing that that's one sort of thing that I think is just going to be taken care of. The other that's going to change things a little bit from last year is I think they are going to end of December by our first meeting on January 10th, they're going to pull the whole budget together. And so it's going to be a coherent package with everything that's proposed. Here's what it adds up to. Here's what total spending would be. And here's what it would imply best guess for tax rate and so on. And that's a little different than what we did when we went through sort of department head by department head. And really until we got to February or so, it was kind of hard to know what's the big picture. So we spent a lot of time looking at each piece. And then somewhere along in February, you could sort of add it up. And given what advisory had said to different committees, you could sort of add it up and see what the overall picture looked like. Well, we're going to at least get one glimpse, undoubtedly one that we're going to recommend many changes to. But we're going to get one glimpse of the big picture before we jump into each individual piece. And so I think that's going to make the conversation it's going to make it possible for us to more focus on some of the big picture questions of wait so what's the total budget that we're talking about here and and if that number you know seems like it's in the right place then if something is going to be added then maybe something else needs to come out and i think it's going to give us more of an opportunity to have that kind of conversation than focusing line by line on how much is this department spending on this particular item i mean i'm sure we'll do plenty of that as well um, that's kind of advisory's job. But I think we'll have the opportunity to take that bigger picture perspective in a little bit of a earlier and easier way. Okay. Thanks. What else? Yeah, Nora. I had I had my hand halfway up. I can't get it past the professor. <laughs> I was thinking, um, Heidi, the difference between the treasurer and finance director, I think that would be great to kind of re go over that for at least again for me and for other people sure the difference. Um, Heidi Deb I, I mean I'm happy to offer my perspective you guys could probably do a better job of that sure as the finance director I do more of the accounting I do like you know dealing with our accounting system plugging in the expenses and all that kind of stuff and Heidi does more of the big picture kind of things like long-term borrowing and um, I guess, you know, more of the the borrowings basically is is the, her biggest big, biggest picture. But she also takes a uh, overall look at it, not so much as on a department basis, but as as overall as a town, how things are going to impact the decisions you make are going to impact the the tax rate. Thank you. Do you want to add to that or? No, I think Deb summed it up pretty well. It, it's mine is more of a, what does this do? Can we put this off? What's the impact on the borrowing for this year? As well as trying to push you to say, well, if we do this, it's going to actually impact, impact several years. So, And Heidi, you, you manage, right, the towns, all the towns' bank accounts, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that, that piece of it. Jeremy, anything you wanted to add to that? Oh, you're muted. Uh, they're the experts, so I, you know, they they explained it quite well. Right. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, Paul. Right. So I have a question. Um, so I was wondering how much external factors influence the budget at all, like whether interest rates go up or down. Does that matter very much or not in terms of like like the bonds the town pays? Like, is that kind of a kind of a known predictable expense, or is that something that we have to agree on some assumptions on some factors outside of our control? Maybe, do you, you want, want to, to start on that? Sure. So that is a good question. And debt service is always one of the unknowns. Um, it's asking for a crystal ball months before we ever do a borrowing, and especially in this market. The last year and a half has been so volatile and everything's been going up. It's very hard to pick like what you think an interest rate is going to be. You do your best guess. Most of the time we've been under budget. We've lucked out, um, but we don't know what it's going to go. And it's hard when all of a sudden some new items come creep up and you have to borrow and that wasn't in your budget. So debt, debt service always has like a little bit of flexibility to be expected that might come in. Um, and I try to estimate that the best as possible. Long-term debt, we know our past long-term debt 
And just if anyone knows, so we kind of, we do a lot of borrowing. Um, it's just kind of how we finance our, our town articles, items. And we have a bonds right now that are 2013, 15, 18, 20, and 22. So those are set. We know for the next up to 30 years payments, what those are gonna be and those are fixed. Each capital year when they come up, those are the new items and we short-term borrow them and that has an interest rate that goes up and down, uh, you know, within the year. Um, we When we go out for it, we do it for six months to a year, depending on the, the time frame. Um, so we'll know what it is after we go to market. Uh, I guess what I'm saying, there's some variability yeah. and it's really hard to predict the market on some, we Thanks. do the best we can. Thanks, Harry. That makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. And uh, of course, and you know, we're in this environment with higher interest rates, where the Federal Reserve's raised rates pretty aggressively, and that you know really changes things. That makes borrowing much more expensive than than it was some uh, some years ago. Yeah, actually, Dan, can I add one other comment on that? Of course. One other factor we didn't talk is we have free cash. So what we also do, one of the things that Deb and I will talk about is looking at what items would we recommend purchasing with our free cash or borrowing. So that's one of the things we look at too, is that we don't always assume we're going to borrow everything. Neither do we assume it's always going to be within your budget. So that is another discussion that comes up as an alternative. Yeah. And I think there, Heidi, specifically referring to um, capital items. So if, for instance, the town were to be purchasing a new ambulance, um, you know, how, how to pay for that, to borrow, um, or to use this uh, term that when I was new to this seemed very strange, free cash, um, which is essentially retained earnings. It's leftover, leftover funds that hadn't been expended from a prior year. Um, so there's there's at the very end of the of the budget cycle before we get to town meeting, there's some back and forth about of the capital items that the town uh, might approve at town meeting, uh, you know, what would be the preferred way to finance those. And for larger capital items, typically um, that's done by borrowing, but um, often for smaller items, it's maybe, ah, let's just use the kind of retained earnings free cash um, to, to finance or pay for some of uh, uh, smaller items. Um, so what else? Any other questions or comments before we jump to talk about September and October? Okay, um, so that would have been a typical year. This is not going to be a typical year, and we're actually going to have a relatively busy six weeks. Uh, so the town is planning a special town fall fall special town meeting on October seventeenth. As I mentioned earlier, it will be in person um, at the high school. Um, in the place where town, where normally the town does uh, does town meetings, and the primary uh, motivation for doing a special town meeting, which doesn't happen often, I think the last one maybe was six years ago. I think 2017, maybe there was a special town meeting. I may not have that exactly right, but it it's not a it's not an every year occurrence. It's a from time to time something happens that really requires um, action in the fall. So the if you saw the document that I sent around that was a draft warrant and emphasizing draft because it may change before we actually um, before the select board actually finalizes that document. The main thing was the North Sherburne Water District, which is all about those two proposed um, largest developments on Coolidge Street, um, one of which is uh, um, 55 plus. Uh, set of uh, um, carriage homes, um, and then the other of which is a 40B uh, set of uh, three apartment buildings uh, for rental rental units. It was at this 2017 special town meeting when the town endorsed both of those projects. Uh, Toll Brothers is the builder who might undertake those, but in order for those projects to proceed, uh, have to get water and sewer from Framingham because that would be more density than could be managed with um, wells and septic. Uh, so the key issue is setting up a water district, which would be a governmental entity separate from the town that would actually manage 
the uh, water infrastructure and the sewer infrastructure and the hook into Framingham after the development was complete. And the uh, one piece of this that is important um, is that, uh, you know, the state has mandates on towns to expand the amount of affordable housing in every community in the state. And Sherburn has been working at that, um, though uh, there is uh, much less affordable housing in the Sherburn than the state would, than, than what the state has sort of set as a goal. So the state has set as more or less a goal that a community should have 10% of the housing units be affordable. And if a community has less than that amount, then a developer can come and do a 40B development um, and essentially then state zoning rules apply rather than Sherburn zoning rules and the town has very little control over how those um, how those developments proceed. Uh, once the town hits the state's kind of target of 10% of housing units in the town are affordable, then the town regains control over those kinds of developments and can shape them in a way that the town thinks is uh, is best. So it turns out that these two developments together, the uh, 55 plus and the um, and the apartment uh, rental units would add enough affordable housing that the town would be in compliance with the state, if you want to call it that, would have hit the state's goal. And then the town would be in a position again where it would have much more uh, control over future proposals for um, for development in town. So I think because of the pressure of 40B developments um, around town, uh, there's a desire to see if the town would approve this so that the water piece can be set up because this project can't really move ahead and lessen until the water piece, um, the water and sewer piece is set up. So that's the issue that was really driving the, the um, special fall town meeting. I will, before our meeting in two weeks, uh, a bunch of it's on the town's website, but I will send around uh, lots of background material on all of this um, so that uh, you know everybody can kind of dig in and, and see. And then there are a handful of other uh, items that are going to be on the warrant that are kind of housekeeping things that uh, for various reasons would be good good to just get taken care of. Um, so that's why we're having a special town meeting. So uh, what does that mean about schedule? Well, it means in two weeks on the 13th, we're going to hear from the proponent or supporters of each of the warrant articles who will come to our meeting and kind of explain to us, here's, here's what this is about, here's the idea behind it, here's why, given that it's a proponent, why that person thinks this is a good idea. Um, and it's our chance to ask questions and dig in and really make sure that we all understand, uh, understand the issue um raised by each of these different um each of these different warrant articles so each of the proponents will come talk to us in two weeks and then two weeks after that on september 27th we have a public hearing uh this should not go all day we'll do this on zoom in the evening in our usual meeting time but the challenge is that we're all going to have to state a position on each of the warrant articles, and we're going to take a vote of either to recommend to the special town meeting approval or not approval. The town will do what the town will do, but, you know, advisory weighs in on each of these. So particularly for Paul and, and, and Penn and our other two members, that's going to come really fast. And suddenly you're going to be a meeting where you're going to be asked to, okay, so special town meeting, water district, the other items, what's your opinion? What's your view? So that's going to come really quickly. Um, and I think for new members, you know, maybe that's a little bit daunting to by the end of September and another month, um, you know, have to take a, in a public meeting, take a position on, you know, some big issues in uh, the one the one big issue in town. I think the others are 
are pretty minor, but the one the one big issue of the water district. So as I said, I will send around a bunch of background material um, before our next meeting. But that means our next meeting on the 13th is really for all of us our chance to dig in, ask questions, make sure that we all understand uh, that issue and the others well enough to be comfortable taking a position. Uh, after that, public and it, the public hearing also is the time for anyone in the public to, uh, again, before the town meeting to come and air perspectives, views, uh, ask questions and so on. And on this water district, my guess, this is a guess, but my guess is our public hearing will be rather lively. And there will be um, members of the public who will join that hearing who will have very strong views um, one way or another on that, on that issue. After that public hearing, we will put together a report with advisories summary of each of the warrant articles and our recommendation and you know record our vote of how we as a committee uh, voted on that um, normally these reports get drafted by all the articles get divided up amongst all of us and we each write up a piece of it we'll do that in the spring um, i think given the time constraints for the fall one right after the public hearing, I'll just write up a draft and then we'll circulate it and make sure everybody's good with it and do whatever editing we need to do to get everybody on board. But rather than uh, the typical thing of having different people write up um, different articles and then pull it together, um, I think I'll just do a draft in the couple of days after the public hearing and then circulate it around uh, for a comment and, and you know, for us to all make sure that, that it doesn't mean we all have to agree because it, it might be that there's a split vote, uh, but you know that the summary of the article is fair. And if, by the way, I should have mentioned, if there is a split vote, um, you know there may be a majority recommendation to do X, and the people who want to do not X can write a minority report that also goes with the advisory report. So you know we'll get all that pulled together, and then about a week after our public hearing. Um, that report will go off to the printer and then we'll get mailed out to the town so that it gets to every household um, in time for the October 17th special uh, town meeting. So that's going to all come pretty fast and furious um, in the next six weeks. And I will, with our two new members, I think I will, <clears throat> so we don't have to go through this all in another meeting, uh, as soon as they're appointed and on board, I will get together with each of each of them and walk them through this so they know what's coming as well. And probably I should wait until after they've agreed to do it, or they might run in horror and say, "No, I don't want to be on, don't want to be on advisory." Paul and Pan, we already got you guys reeled in, but um, so I'll have to be strategic about that. Um, so let me stop there. So questions, comments, Jeremy. Again, if I said anything that you want to add to or, or correct, please jump in. But I want to just give everybody a sense of, of what's coming and especially with the fall, the things that are going to be coming quickly. Jeremy, go ahead if you wanted to. Yeah, I guess by, by just some additional information for the uh, regarding the special town meeting. Um, there's right now there's five Warren articles two would be really considered cleanup articles from the town clerk. Uh, there's an article to reappropriate funds to help support the reconstruction of Washington and Maple Street. So that there may be some discussion there. Um, you know, hopefully you know, you know, that's going to forge a plan for us to, to move forward with that project. Um, somewhat dependent on receiving some grant funds um, in October as well. So um there might be some discussion there. And then the other two articles are related to the developments, the Coolidge Crossing and the Meadowbrook Common Projects, as, as Dan mentioned. One being an amendment to the preliminary development plan for the age-restricted housing, really a square footage change. It doesn't change anything else regarding the, the project other than some square footage changes to, to help. The, the current developer um, believes that you know the market is a little different than what was uh, approved uh, previously. So. It's just to, to help with the um, you know, marketability of their their units and the others to set up the water sewer district. So um, there's a wealth of information uh, out there that um, 
is 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 already out you know in the public sphere there's a lot of information on the town's website there's been a number of meetings before the select board as well talking about this north sherburn water sewer district uh so there's certainly many things that you know you all could could look to to, to get some some pre-information <laughs> ahead of your hearing but we'll we'll have uh, i've set up a working group to help inform that north sherburn water sewer district so we've been meeting uh regularly for the last oh boy since december um and some you know some fairly well uh informed and, and knowledgeable folks who are on that committee and they'll they'll be before you at your your next meeting to help um you know give some more color and information for you so um but in advance of that uh, there's certainly a wealth of information that i'll we'll make sure that dan has that um you know so we can get that out to you you all yeah thanks jeremy that's great and uh it, it just to pick up on one thing jeremy said um, select board has had a number of discussions about this and their meetings like ours are recorded and the uh, recordings are all available on the town's YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search for Sherburn select board or go search for Sherburn advisory, you will find uh, recordings of all of their meetings and also all of uh, our meetings. And so, uh, um, so, you know, if you wanted to go, I should probably, we should probably figure out what were some of the key meetings when they talked about it so we could point people specifically to those dates as as ones to track down if you want to hear some of uh, people talking about things. And then I just, as, as Jeremy was talking, just popped up the draft warrant, which I sent around. I don't know how many people had a chance to open it up and look at it, but as Jeremy said, um, articles one and two were kind of housekeeping things of getting the towns uh, in compliance with state law and bylaws adjusted and so on. Uh, Article three is the one that relates to the financing of the roundabout, proposed roundabout at uh, Maple and Washington. And then Article four um, is some adjustments to the preliminary development plan for Meadowbrook and Article five is the water district. So all laid out, all laid out there. Um, thanks, Jeremy. I'm glad you uh, chimed in with the extra context. That's very helpful. Um, anything else, questions, other comments? I'm full of questions today, Dan, sorry. Um, ahead, the evening meeting for advisory, um, how late do you, in, like what's the cutoff date on that time in the evening? The like time? for the public hearing? Yes. So there is no cutoff time. Um, I don't want the meeting to go on forever. Uh, and I think, you know, given the rules that we typically use for a public hearing where proponents have five minutes and to present, and then each public comment is limited to two minutes, uh, I'm going to be very strict about that. And given that there aren't that many articles, and really, I think it's the roundabout one, as Jeremy highlighted, that might generate some discussion. And then the uh, water district one, I think, will generate a lot of discussion. But people really are not meant to uh, repeat things that other people said. This isn't the public hearing isn't meant to be a pile on with how many people can repeat the same point. It's meant to be people should come and bring new information that maybe hasn't been hadn't been considered. Um, and so my hope is if we start at seven, that say by ten we're done. Um, I can't promise that because if 200 people, I don't think this will happen, but if 200 people uh, from town arrive and all want to speak, it'll go longer. I think I will schedule, I need to think this through, but I think I will schedule a continuation night. So if it really does start to get to be ridiculous and there's still a lot of people who want to speak, that we could continue that meeting to maybe have to check and see when select board meetings are all, but, you know, maybe continue it to Thursday night or something. But my hope is that we wrap it up within three hours. And Jeremy by that time, everybody will have said everything that everybody will have said everything that can be said about it. And, you know, then we'll just take that all on board. We'll vote and, you know, move forward on things. Same thing with town meeting. I take it to Jeremy, Dan. Yeah. Uh, when in the spring, when did town meeting ended like about nine fifty or something? Went from seven till just a little before ten, if I'm remembering right. 
something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, the, the moder there is, you know, a provision for a second night, but I think the moderator would certainly like to get everything done in one night, and it would be at her discretion whether, you know, she would continue past a certain time. You know, I All think right, she'll please. probably set some expectations up front, but, um, you know, there'll be a cutoff at some point in the evening. And. And, and it's a good reminder for me, Nora, that I think I will go ahead and post that continuation meeting. So, of course, it needs to be posted 48 hours ahead in order for us to do it. Um, so I will maybe check in with people on schedule, but come up with a, a continuation date if we if we do need one. I'm hoping not. There aren't a lot of articles. And, you know, I think people have strong feelings about it. But I think after we dig in next week, I don't think the I mean, I think. The, the what's proposed is pretty clear and it's people have strong feelings about it, but what's being proposed is pretty clear. So just a matter of people coming to understand what's being proposed and then, you know, work through, work through views on that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, and I would just say, um, and really this goes particularly, um, for you, Penn and Paul, I'm happy to talk anytime. So um, at some point we should exchange cell numbers. So it's easy to easy to easy to connect. Um, but if things come up either related to things that we've just talked about, or really anytime during the year stuff comes up and you're wondering, so how did that work? Or what was up with that? Or how does this move going forward? Um, I am always happy to yeah. always happy to connect and talk about talk about thank, things. Thank you. It's much uh, appreciated. Appreciate it. Yeah. There, the, the, uh, my, if you have a typical experience of a new advisory member, uh, there will be a number of times during the year when you'll be just a little puzzling over. So why did that happen that way? Um, and if that happens, uh, I'm sure other incumbent members would be happy to do this too, but. I'd be super happy to connect and talk about, you know, answer questions or talk about that stuff anytime. Thank you. All right. Anything else on schedule or um, special town meeting? Okay. So the last item, and then we can talk about how we want to handle this. The last item is approving minutes. Um, so a couple things on minutes. One, I didn't do this tonight because I'll just write up minutes from tonight's meeting. It's not a long, complicated meeting. But typically, um, we rotate around the taking of minutes. And so at the beginning of a meeting, I'd ask for a volunteer and everybody kind of looks away. Um, and then I do my you know, college prof stare at the class to try to get somebody to engage. And somebody finally says, OK, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take minutes. Um, for new folks, you, know, you probably want to wait a little while till you do that. So you sort of get used to the rhythm of things and you start to see, you know, what's the typical way that minutes for advisory get put together. The minutes do get posted and they become the official record. In addition to the Zoom recording, they become the official record um, of our of our meeting. So advisory. So so I'll, I'll write up tomorrow. I'll write up minutes from tonight's meeting. Um and then we'll circulate those. And then at our next meeting, we should be able to vote to approve those. Advisory had a meeting in early July when we took care of that end of budget year stuff that I mentioned. I sent a copy of those around. So for us to approve those, we would need five members to vote in favor of approval. So I don't think these are controversial minutes, but Paul and Penn, that puts you in the position of being asked to vote on minutes for a meeting that you aren't at. So as a matter of kind of procedure, there is no problem with your doing that. That's totally fine. I think the first advisory meeting I went to, there were minutes and I was asked to vote on minutes for meetings I hadn't been to. And, you know, as long as you have had a chance to look through them, don't see anything goofy um, and are confident that you know i think i took those minutes that i didn't wouldn't be misrepresenting something you know it would be fine for you to say yeah i you know i vote to approve those if that puts you in a position tonight where you're feeling like you know i really don't want to do that i just wasn't at that meeting 
then we can just hold those over and next meeting when I think Natalie joins in, there'll be five people who I think were at that meeting and we could just do it then. So Paul Penn, put it to you. Yeah. You guys okay doing this tonight or would you prefer to just hold off and wait until the next meeting? I'm fine doing it tonight. Like I skimmed through the minutes and I'm comfortable with them. So okay. Penn? I'd rather wait, but if uh, I can abstain if there's the needed number. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I think we'll get to five so that um so I think that would um yeah, it sounds like that works fine. Um all right, so I would entertain a motion then to approve. Um, and I see now I've got a, let's see, was it, I mean, let me pop these up. Let me back up a second. Let me pop these up on the screen. So what we normally do is uh, pop these up with a, a screen share, scroll through them and occasionally People will have small or maybe not small, but corrections or adjustments. Um, so our typical thing would be everybody, you know, the, they will have been circulated earlier um, and would scroll through and particularly Mike, Nora, Wasim, if there's anything that you saw or Paul, if you saw a, a typo or some other thing um, or Jeremy, Heidi or Deb, if you see anything we can make uh, any corrections on screen in real time. And hearing none, um, I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the July 12th advisory meeting. I so make moved. a motion to approve the and minutes of the advisory. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, so let's do a roll call here. Um, Mike? Aye. Uh, Wasim? Aye. Nora? Aye. Paul? Aye. Uh, Penn? Abstain. Okay. And I'm I as well, so that gets us to 5 -0. minutes are approved. Okay, great, thank you. Um, just that way I can now get them posted and anybody wants to see what happened can uh, can see that. Okay. Um, anything else anyone wanted to bring up before we wrap, wrap up? That gets to the end of everything that I had in mind for this evening. If not, then I would entertain a motion that we, to adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, quick roll call. Um, we'll do this one in reverse order. Um, Penn. Aye. Uh, Paul. Aye. Mike. Aye. Wasim. Aye. Nora. Aye. And I'm I as well. All right, we are adjourned. Um, thanks very much. Appreciate everybody um, listening to me uh, going on and on about what's coming, but just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what the next six weeks were going to look like and the next six months were going to look like. So we'll uh, see you um, see you in a couple of weeks, and you know, again, happy to happy to talk about any of the issues in the uh, intervening time. If that um, if there's any info that I could provide that would be helpful. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so hey, much, everyone. Right. Good night. Dan, Good night. I, I took notes. Do you want me to oh, share? It, or do sure. you want to do the same? Uh, no. If you took notes, if do you want to do you want to write up minutes, or do you just want to send me? Yeah, a note? sure. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll write up the minutes then. Okay. okay. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. All right. Very good. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Nice. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.